Greetings, this is Duin, and today I am continuing my new series on the development of this island adventure dungeon crawler type game that I started a few weeks back. Now, if you saw that previous video, you may be concerned about the lack of visible development here. The art is admittedly entirely the same, and so is the movement and other systems. However, I will still claim that this is a feature, given that now, instead of running as a normal desktop program, this game is also now compatible with being in a browser on the web. I have also managed to output the game to mobile, and basically the entire graphics framework has been replaced with no visible difference. So here is that long and winding story of how I converted the game to run on Raylib. Before all that, however, there was a long decision-making process of what graphics framework to convert my game to. The game engine, as it was previously, was originally built as part of a school project where SFML was the recommended framework at the time. The game engine has then used SFML since then, and it has worked pretty well. It is a C++-based system, very object-oriented design, but it worked very well for the purposes, and I have kept the core systems of that game engine the same ever since. However, while it says that it can support Android and iOS, that does not include the web, and those turned out to be quite a challenge, and there were other considerations that made me decide to switch off of SFML in the end. With that decision made, I decided I want something I wanted something very simple and in the background that didn't impact the design of my engine too much. For that, I considered a few things. At that point, I eventually decided on Sokol. Sokol is focused on C rather than C++ and uses a header only import system which did have some impact on the design of my eventual engine. Due to the way that SoCal works, I ended up deciding to put all SoCal-related code into one central file and having everything else use some customized translation layers. This had many benefits and is a design system I kind of prefer and ended up being a fun challenge to do. I did have to make some new data structures in order to do this, basically converting SFML vectors into my own data structure, vectors and rectangles and all the corresponding operators, as well as my own color and blend mode and event system. One benefit of this centralized graphics framework usage is that all images and large graphics objects are stored in this one centralized location, and all texture usage can be passed around using just a, num a numerical ID for those textures, including for loading textures from files and storing the size and load state of those files. I even managed to add in a specialized function for picking a singular pixel color from a texture. Not that that has too many uses at the moment. The update system stayed about the same, but the individual drawing system got a complete rewrite, where I now pass in vectors of rectangles that can be used to draw specific sections of a texture to different parts of the image and the node. This does end up looking very complicated, uh, but allowed me to recreate my tile maps at full features 
and also draw rectangles and other objects without much difficulty. I am a bit worried about what text rendering will look like, but that is a problem for the future. Thankfully, SoCal uses a very similar event system as SFML does, so I was able to do some pretty direct translation, although I did have to create my own event structure. This was, again, pretty much a bonus because I was easier, it was easier to restructure the events into a format that kept only the data I, con I was concerned with and was, a bun and was much more efficient than the, uh, than the large SFML event structure. My game engine already includes a system for swapping out keybinds and mapping any kind of input to such remappable actions. This includes mouse buttons, joysticks, joystick gamepad buttons, and even joystick movements, though direct joystick to player movement uh, runs through a separate system. To make this system simpler and more direct, some of the events are duplicated in my system, sending out a key press event with a key code and also a mouse event, for example, but this does make a lot of the other systems much simpler to use and overall is still a compacting of the data. Unfortunately, SoCal does not have direct joystick support at the moment, but I'll get back to that. Another benefit from switching to SoCal directly is that it has built-in support for IMGUI, a tool for making very easy and simple debug windows. This includes things like looking at the images loaded by the engine and other statistics, though I was able to add plenty of my own tools as well. This FPS counter tracks both threads, update threads, and draw threads in a few different formats. I also created a noise map generator, which will come in handy later. And even a color picker, which can either select a color directly or can be used to look at textures in the game and select colors from different coordinates. Even after that, there is also a grid editor which can directly edit tile maps. IMGUI makes these tools very easy to be quickly iterated on and improved. And I am certain many similar tools like this will continue to be added to the system. However, with those many things being said, I did get curious about one other library. Raylib has many of the same benefits as SoCal, being that it is cross-platform, very straightforward and low level. It works very well with C and C++. And while I originally decided against it, decisions about input handling and such, I did still like the look of its simple and easily readable framework. Realizing that my so-called approach allowed easy swapping of the entire graphics framework, I tried it, and that also worked surprisingly well. The Raylib version of the same backend update list file is very similar, and most of the functions are essentially identical. However, when we get to texture loading and buffers, there is quite a difference. And in the draw node section, the translation from my engine's events and colors and such gets very different. Raylib also had very easy connections to the IMGUI libraries, so I was able to port over all of my debug tools with no effort. The grid editor and FPS counter and color picker work exactly the same way as with SoCal. However, if we scroll down farther, 
the event system did turn out to be very different. Unlike SFML and SoCal, Raylib uses a more query-based system where every frame the code must ask Raylib for the status of all the buttons and mouse inputs and positions. I decided I really did want to keep my event-based input system. So to improve efficiency, I added some structures to allow the input config systems to list out what key binds they want to watch out for. Button and keyboard inputs are thus only queried for the key binds that are being requested, though everything else is queried and added to the event queue for every frame. I add some extra tools for reducing duplicate events and such, but in the end, it works just as well as with SoCal does. By the time I got to the process of actually converting the game to work on web and mobile, I was pretty firmly on the side of Raylib, more or less. So the Raylib version of Update Lib is the only one with specific structures for working with web and Android update orders. Uh, web in particular has some different thread requirements and such. To enable simple touchscreen support on mobile and such, the game also automatically creates a joystick and can create similar buttons that will simulate joystick input on phones and if you use a touchscreen on any of the other modes. However, I think that wraps this up. A lot of work went into the different variants of the game and the different engine improvements, but in the end, there's not much content or visual improvements to the actual game itself. So, while I have many plans for the next few episodes, that will all have to wait. For the technically minded out there, hopefully this has been illuminating or an interesting approach. And for everyone else, thanks for watching.